The Arizona Diamondbacks have long been a team known for their gimmicks. Having a swimming pool in the outfield, pioneering dark gray road uniforms, and winning a World Series with just two starting pitchers and basically not much else. One of their sweetest and most famous gimmicks in recent years is the churro dog. A churro inside a long john donut bun topped with ice cream, whipped cream, and caramel and chocolate sauces. To make our own, we'll start with the dough for our nuts. Bloom one tablespoon of active dry yeast in one cup of warm milk and one third cup of sugar until it's nice and frothy. In the meantime, measure out 245 grams of all-purpose flour, half a teaspoon of salt, and one quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and whisk it together. Add in 86 grams of melted butter and crack in two large eggs. I'm pretty happy with going one for two on the one-handed egg crack here. Add one teaspoon vanilla extract and your yeast mixture and mix that together with a spoon or spatula. Add in another 255 grams of flour and bring that together until it forms a shaggy ball of dough. This dough should be stickier than a pitcher's fingers, so resist the urge to add more flour. At this point, I would normally turn the dough out onto the counter to knead. However, since I actually film these videos in someone else's kitchen, this time I forgot to bring my bench scraper and had to improvise. I decided my best course of action was to knead it in the bowl until it was workable and then I finished kneading on the counter with the closest thing I could find to a bench scraper till it was smooth and stretchy. Finally, grease up the mixing bowl, cover the dough, and let it rest for two hours while we make the rest of our ingredients. First step for the churros is to combine one cup of sugar and one teaspoon of cinnamon in a flat baking apparatus that's bigger than a churro and stir it so it's evenly combined. For the churro batter, start by combining one cup of water, half a cup of butter, and quarter teaspoon of salt in a medium saucepan, and bring that to a boil while stirring constantly. Add in one cup of flour, reduce the heat, and keep stirring until it comes together. Let it cool, and then mash in three beaten eggs to the batter until it resembles mashed potatoes. Fit a piping bag with a large star tip. In my case, I used a number eight B and fill up the bag with your churro batter. Pipe the churro batter into six inch lengths into a pot or wok filled with oil heated to 350 degrees. Cut the churros off from the piping bag with scissors. To get straighter churros, Drag the piping bag across the surface of the oil as you pipe it in. Let the churros cook until they're golden brown, then remove them onto a paper towel lined baking sheet to cool for a minute. Once cool enough to handle, but still hot, roll your churros in the cinnamon and sugar mixture to coat the outsides. For the chocolate sauce, whisk to thoroughly combine half a cup of cocoa powder and one cup of sugar in a saucepan. Add in one quarter teaspoon of salt and half a cup of water and bring that to a boil. Reduce it to a simmer and stir constantly for about 30 seconds. Once that's done, store it in the fridge immediately. For the caramel sauce, I used the sauce I had left over from my Cracker Jack and Mac Dog video. If you want the full instructions, watch that video. But the short version is, boil one cup of granulated sugar until it's melted, and then add in six tablespoons of butter and half a cup of heavy cream until it's combined. For the glaze for our donuts, in a medium microwave safe bowl, combine half a cup of chocolate chips, two tablespoons of butter, two teaspoons of corn syrup, and two teaspoons of water, and microwave for 20 seconds, stirring together and repeating until it's all melted and smooth. By now, our donuts should be done rising. With our donut batter, which is now doubled in size, punch it down and roll it out into a squarish shape at about half an inch thick. Don't worry too much about making that square perfect as we will be cutting the edges off to make it perfectly square. 
divide that square in half and then each half into quarters to make eight rectangles. Place those rectangles on a parchment paper lined baking sheet and cover it with a towel to let rise for another 30 minutes to an hour. Fry the donuts in the same oil as your churros at 350 degrees. It shouldn't take them more than a minute or two to puff up and get golden brown. Let them cool completely on a paper towel lined baking sheet before coating them in your chocolate glaze. To put it all together, cut your donut in half and place the churro in the middle. Cover the top of the churro with a couple scoops of vanilla ice cream or frozen yogurt, and then top that with a couple of decorative whipped cream swirls. Drizzle the entire dog with your chocolate and caramel sauces, and this sweet and strange sandwich is ready to eat. Unfortunately, by the time I set up this shot, I was disappointed to see my churro dog had mostly collapsed. The ice cream had started to melt and was overall looking a lot like the 2021 Diamondbacks on the road. One thing that's great about this channel though, is that not only do I get to make great food and talk about baseball, is it challenges me to get outside of my comfort zone as a cook. And this recipe was one of the biggest challenges I've had in the kitchen. It may not have looked perfect, but it tasted as good as the 2001 Diamondbacks. The donut and the churro complement each other like Randy Johnson and Kurt Schilling. Just to show you though, that taking a single loss doesn't mean it's over. After I stopped filming, I made another churro dog and it looked perfect. I even managed to grab a picture or two. So if you have a sweet tooth, give this recipe a try. If it doesn't work out the first time, that's okay. Enjoy the process, enjoy the food, and enjoy the game. No hits through eight and two thirties, one out away. Center field, Marte, yeah. it's a no-hitter! 